Here's an email from Eli. He says, I live in Israel, and I'm very confused. I have some non-politically correct questions. Mm -hmm. Why is Israel put on the side of the imperialist? My understanding is that the powers that be are actually trying to reduce, eliminate Israel, see the real story behind the assassination of Prime Minister Ishtak Rabin, by inventing this non-historical people called the Palestinians, looking forward to your comments. Mm -hmm. Well... There's different uh, aspects to all of this. Every group in the world will be used. And one of the best ways to be used and the easiest ways to be used is to really believe that you're a people. And we've found that done through history as they set peoples against people, you see. Uh, you'll find an em as empires rise and fall, you always have the same people moving in to the empires to create the empires. These are the guys with the cash. It's a strange, this, until the money situation is solved, nothing will ever change. Power could never get to the people uh, if they don't have con command of, of the money-making system. And they don't, and they never have, and it's not intended that they ever shall. Now, Israel, if you go into the history of Israel, and, and I'm not talking about the, the, the present-day history. The present-day history of, of Israel has been rewritten. And many uh, authors in, in Israel and, and uh, like, like Shlomo Sands, uh, have written about lots to do with Jewish history and, and the fallacies of it too. He's not the only one. There's lots of professors in Tel Aviv who have written books about it as well. Uh, when, when the Zionists came in, the Zionists was a political movement, but it was also tied in with a world socialist and communist movement, completely tied in with it. Uh, it was also a messianic movement because they used the, the old idea of, of Jews were to be a light to the world, etc., and show the people how to live. And, they, of course, they used it for warfare purposes in some countries instead. But, but the fact is it caught the imagination of lots of people. And so it, they were set up in, in Israel, modern-day Israel. If you go into the writings of, say, um, uh, there was Lieutenant Governor Storrs, S-T-O-R-R-S. He was a Lieutenant Governor for Israel, or Palestine as they called it then, on behalf of Britain at the end of World War I uh, through the 20s and 30s. And he was in charge of setting up immigration. There was mass immigration long before World War II into Israel. In fact, from the 1800s, Rothschild in London was sponsoring early groups to come in from Russia mainly. But y y you find that in his memoirs, Mr. Estors, he says, we have set up in the Middle East. Now, who's talking, who is he talking on behalf of we have set up? As a lieutenant governor for there, on behalf of, of, of England and the king. What do you mean we have set up in Palestine an Ulster? Now, Ulster is what they did in Ireland to create dissension down through the centuries because Ulster would always be faithful to the British or the monarchy rule in a country where the native people, the Irish people, were going to be dominated by incomers uh, who would be called lords, etc., etc., uh, who would use heavy force to keep the people in check, and in other words, dominate the people, subjugate them. Same thing as Israel. Why would he say we're, we have created an Ulster? You see? So... They're very good at doing this, using different peoples to come in, create a base, give them a reality, uh, and, and, and then they have no idea there's a bigger purpose behind all of this. They have no idea at all. And the purpose is? The purpose is these guys work centuries in advance for their plans. And they knew, and Winston Churchill knew it, because he talked about it in, early, in the early 1900s, uh, about all of the, 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 the whole region of the, the Arab countries, the Arabian countries, and even into Egypt too. But uh, he said that eventually there'll be massive wars to take over these countries f for the oil which is here. Because he said the 20th century will be a century where oil will be in cr incredible demand. He even talked about northern, or, uh, 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 later on he talked about northern Iraq uh, would be a focal point for war as well because of the vast oil fields which they knew then were under the ground. Uh, everything is known way ahead of time, way ahead of time. And so the, the, the big boys who really own international corporations um, had to put something in the Middle East 
long before they were going to go in and, and, and bomb us. They, they needed bases. They needed an ally there, someone who would be on their side and who would profit from it too, uh, to take over those countries. They also fed to a lot of the Israelis, uh, uh, again, the messianic policies of, of, of re-establishing an Israel from the, uh, all, all the way to the Euphrates, in other words, a greater Israel. In fact, the, the first prime minister they had in Israel talked about this. So they didn't, didn't want a little place called Palestine. They wanted a vast place from Egypt to the Euphrates. Uh, and that's where it's going today. So technically, people from Israel, some of them will uh, be eventually put in charge of a lot of these ex-countries. Uh, this is part of the plan that's ongoing today. And this control that Israel has over the United States that's talked about, mm -hmm. what is that about? Well, there's no doubt at all about that. So if you look at some of the Israeli newspapers over the years, various prime ministers, I remember when Bill Clinton was in, and the prime minister there, another one says, don't worry about the U.S., we own it. You know? It's rather blatant. There's no guessing about uh, how, how they put it across in their own newspapers. It's straightforward. So that's still um, a policy today. You know? 